Hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders over $10 and help with the channel at the same time. Sometimes I like to start off my videos with a fun little description. This is not one of those videos. This week, Sean is playing his NAF deck and keeps down and dirty, Swamp, Forest, Leyland of the Void, Golgari Cluestone, Blighted Woodland, and Borderland Explorer. I am playing my Titania deck and keep three snow-covered forests, Harmonize, Gaia's Touch, Hall of Gemstone, and Concordant Crossroads. Matt is playing his Dino Daddy Gishath deck and keeps it home with Sun Petal Grove, Command Tower, Cinder Glades, Plains, Asceticism, Mirari's Wake, and Teferi's Protection. And lastly, Combo Mike, who has recanted his combo ways and is now simply Synergy Mike, is playing Kresh and keeps it home with Carplusion Forest, Three Forests, Perforos, Parallel Lives, and Primal Vigor. Matt wins the die roll and starts us off. Sean does have a pregame effect though and puts his Leyland of the Void onto the field. Matt plays a Cinder Glade and passes turn. I play a Snow Covered Forest and pass. Mike plays a Carplusion Forest and passes. Sean plays a Forest and passes. Matt plays a Command Tower and also passes. I play my second Snow Covered Forest and cast Gaia's Touch. This lets me play another Snow Covered Forest and I pass to Mike. Mike plays a Forest and passes. Sean drops a Swamp and passes. Matt drops Sun Petal Grove and passes. I cast Soaring in my main phase and cast Harmonize. I then play a Wooded Foothills and pass turn. Mike plays a Swamp and passes. Sean plays Unclaimed Territory, naming Elves, and casts Kulgari Cluestone before passing to Matt. Matt drops a Mountain and passes. I cast a Drag a Tree Speaker and pay 2 to level it up before passing to Mike. Mike plays a Forest and pays 4 to cast Parallel Lives. Sean plays a Blighted Woodland and casts Reclamation Sage. With the Enter the Battlefield trigger occurring, Sean destroys Mike's Parallel Lives. Sean then casts Swiftfoot Boots and passes turn. Matt plays a Plains and brings up Marari's Wake, and Sean realizes that when one problem leaves, oftentimes another quickly takes its place. I untap for my turn, draw a card, and pass to Mike. Mike plays a Mountain and drops Primal Vigor. I am now paralyzed with indecision over which to blow up as I now have three great targets and only one Nature's Claim in my hand. Sean casts Knight's Whisper, drawing two and losing two life. Sean follows us up by casting Nisa, Fastwood Seer, and goes to find a forest, but not before he shortcuts and equips the boots onto her. He grabs a forest and puts it onto the field as a land for turn. Matt plays a forest, which means he has 12 mana. He then has to tap only three lands to cast Asceticism and pass his turn. At the end of Matt's turn, I sacrifice a forest to pay for Harrow and grab two snow-covered forests while exiling Harrow and the snow-covered forest I sacrificed. Despite all my mana, for my turn, I only play a Sunstone and pass to Mike. Mike plays a Creekwood lead during his first main phase and then drops a Temple of Malice. He scries the top card and puts it on the bottom of his library. Sean casts a Viridian Zealot in his main phase to help deal with some of these powerful enchantments. He then pays to sacrifice it and targets Matt's Aestheticism with the activated ability. Matt doesn't want to lose it though, so he casts Teferi's Protection and whiffs Sean's attempt to destroy the enchantment. Sean then casts Borderland Explorer and discards Down and Dirty to go and find a basic forest. Sean then plays the forest, and Nyssa flips to become Nyssa Sage Animist. Sean then upticks Nyssa, revealing a creature off the top and putting it into his hand. Matt phases in on his turn and plays a Rogue's Passage. Matt then brings out the Dino Daddy himself and swings him at Sean. Sean decides to take 8 rather than lose his creatures, and Matt begins to flip some cards off the top. Matt only hits 2 dinos off the triggered ability, but one of them is a Kana, which I'm told is pretty okay. Matt then passes to me, but at the end of his turn, I cast Nature's Claim to destroy Leyline of the Void. I also crack my Wooded Foothills once the Leyline is gone, and then finish off with the Realms Uncharted. I grab Glacial Chasm, Ghost Quarter, Inventor's Fair, and Command Beacon. Mike kindly gives me the Fair and Beacon, while I dumpster my Chasm and Quarter. I play a Command Beacon as my land for turn, and cast Titania, who upon entering brings back my Wooded Foothills. I then pass to Mike. Mike gets two worm tokens on his upkeep from the Liege and the Primal Vigor and plays a Mountain. He then casts Awakening Zone and Perforos and his side of the field is starting to look very painful. For Sean's turn, he casts his own copy of Creekwood Liege during his main phase and upticks Nyssa. He reveals Elvish Promenade and casts a Jiraka Warcaller but only kicks it twice. He then puts the boots onto the Warcaller. At the end of Sean's turn, Matt taps his three open lands to make six mana and uses Sakama to destroy the Primal Vigor and the Swiftfoot Boots. Matt plays a Plains and moves to combat. He swings his Majestic Heliotheris and Jazath at Mike. The Majestic gives Gisath flying and Mike takes 11 damage. Matt then flips eight cards and hits four dinosaurs, Thundering Spineback, Death Gorger Scavenger, 
Verdant Sun's avatar, and Itali Primal Storm. The map then gains 25 life from the Verdant Sun's avatar, seeing all those big old dinosaurs coming into play. And he also gets to exile my Glacial Chasm with his Scavenger Enter the Battlefield trigger. Matt then casts Wayward Swordtooth in the second main phase, gaining another 7 life, but also gains City's Blessing. Matt then plays a Temple of Abandon, scrying the top card and putting it on the bottom. At the end of Matt's turn, I cast Beast Within to destroy Mirari's Wake, and Matt has a response. Matt taps 3 lands to float 6 mana, and has Sagama blow up my guy's touch and Mike's Awakening Zone. I take this opportunity to crack the Wooded Foothills again, taking 1 to go and find a Snow Covered Forest and get an Elemental Token. During my main phase, I cast a Scavenging Ooze and pass to Mike. On Mike's upkeep, he gains only one Worm token, but deals two to everyone thanks to Perforos. Mike then plays a Forest and casts Fecundity. He passes to Sean. Sean also gets a Worm on his upkeep and has brought the appropriate tokens. Sean then casts Nath the Guilt Leaf and upticks Nyssa, revealing Golgari Guildgate. He gets to put it into play and casts Arterial Flow and all of Sean's opponents discard two. Before the spell resolves though, Matt casts Chaos Warp and targets Perforos. Mike then shuffles it in and reveals Altar of Dementia. And with the Arturo for resolving, we all then discard two cards if we can, and Sean gains five elves. Mike then sacrifices his worms and finally his liege to mill Matt for 11 cards. While Matt is milling, Mike also takes the time to cast fresh meat and gains four beastie tokens. Mike also gets to draw from fecundity for all of his creatures dying. Matt casts Cultivate in his first main phase and grabs a forest and a mountain. The forest hits the field tapped, and Matt plays the mountain for turn. But even without a hand though, Matt's board is still terribly threatening, and Matt moves to combat. He swings Atali, the Majestic, and Gishath at Sean, giving Gishath flying. We all reveal off the top for the Atali trigger, and wouldn't you know it, Perforos is one card away from coming back. Matt also hits the lightning gears from Sean. Sean then chumps Atali with an elf, and takes 11 damage. Matt then reveals the top 8 cards, and hit Gorin Ceratops and Polyraptor, gaining 10 life from the Verdant Sun's avatar. Matt then gears up Kassath with the Lightning Greaves and passes turn. At the end of Matt's turn, I have Scavenging Ooze devour 7 creatures from my opponent's graveyards, and I also gain 7 life, as the Ooze gains 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters. I play a Blighted Woodlands as my land for turn, and crack it to grab 2 Snow Covered Forests. This also gets me another Elemental Token, and I pass to Mike. Mike casts Soul Ring and brings out his own copy of Reclamation Sage. He has it come into play and destroys Matt's Asceticism. Mike then proceeds to bring Emrakul's Evangel and pass his turn. On Sean's upkeep, he gains another Worm token and has me discard a card at random with Nath. Sean then draws for turn and upticks Nyssa, revealing Putrefy and puts it to his hand. Sean then plays a Bayou and casts Elvish Promenade. He gains 9 Elves and drops Elixir of Immortality, cracking it almost as soon as it comes out. This lets him shuffle his graveyard into his library and he gains 5 life. Moving to combat, he swings 5 Elves who are 4 4s at Matt and Matt activates the Kama before moving to blocks. He has the Kama deal 3 damage to the Liege, killing it, and Sean gets a draw card from Fecundity. Matt then decides to just take the 15, and with nothing else, Sean passes turn. During Matt's main phase, he moves the Greaves to his Majestic, and swings the Tally, the Gorian Ceratops, the Majestic, and Kassath at Sean. This gives all of Matt's creatures double strike thanks to the Gorian Ceratops, and Kassath learns how to fly again. We then exile the top cards of our library, and Matt, Mike, and I reveal Heroic Intervention, Soul's Fire, and Lanowar Elves respectively, while Sean reveals land. Matt decides to cast Heroic Intervention, but Sean's ready with a Putrefy to target Kishath. Matt responds to this by casting Soul's Fire to have Zakama deal 10 to Sean. Kishath then dies, and I sacrifice a snow-covered force to save Sean in the hopes that he'll help us deal with Matt's onslaught of dinos. Matt then blows up the Sunstone with Sakama and casts Lanowar Elves, who deals 2 as it comes into play. Matt also gains 1 life, and then passes turn. I draw for turn, and with nothing really impactful in my hand, I pass. Mike plays a Temple of Malady and scries. He bottoms the card, and then casts Crush the Blood Braided. Mike then taps his Evangel, sacrificing his board, which gives him 6 3 2 Eldrazi tokens, and gives Crush 17 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and draws him 6 cards. Mike then casts Impact Tremors, and passes to Sean. Sean has Matt discard at random on his upkeep, and I remember that I should have gotten another elemental token for sacrificing the land of the Sunstone. Sean then gets another elf token, and upticks Nissa in his main phase. He reveals a forest, and puts it into play. Sean then plays Jungle Hollow, gaining a life. Sean then cracks the clue stone to draw a card. This just so happens to be a Deathrite Shaman, which he casts, followed up by a Golgari Key Rune. Knowing he's going to die though, even if he doesn't take out Matt, Sean swings everything he can at Matt, keeping the Warcaller back in case of tricks. This is over 50 points of damage, which Matt could technically take, but he decides to block some of it. 
he chumps Nath with Sakama, the Rex Sage and Explorer with Scavenger and Swordtooth, and then three of the Elves. Matt takes 35 points of damage from the rest that get through. With all these creatures dying, Crash jumps up to 39 plus 1 plus 1 counters, and Sean gets to draw 5 cards. Matt then gains a token copy of Polyraptor, gaining back 6 life and dealing 2 to everyone. In his second main phase, Sean casts Raid the Bones, bottoming both cards and drawing 2 while taking 2. Matt draws for turn and is out for blood. He recasts Gasath, gaining 7 life and dealing 2 to his opponents. At this point, Sean realizes that he's all but dead and has to go help a customer, so he scoops it up. Matt decides to play cool though and swings the Majestic, the Gorian Ceratops, Atali, and Gazath at Mike to take him out. Matt gives Gazath flying, which I question his ability to do so with those tiny arms, and we then resolve the Atali trigger. Matt only gets burgeoning from me as he and Mike reveal lands. Mike, knowing that he's about to die, decides to play Kingmaker and sacrifices his 6 Eldrazi to mill Matt for 18. Kresh also gains 18 plus 1 plus 1 counters, bringing him up to a whopping 57 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Mike then sacrifices Crash to make Matt mill the remainder of his library and dies to combat damage. At this point, Matt can't kill me and all I have to do is pass my turn so that Matt fails to draw and loses the game. Game review time. So I think you could basically say either Matt or I won this game, depending entirely on whether or not your playgroup allows for spite plays. Had Mike not milled out Matt, there was no way that I was going to be winning that game, so my win hinged entirely on the fact that Mike was taking out Matt on his way out the door. I mean, I certainly didn't deserve a win because my deck really underperformed this game, unfortunately. Considering the slow start we all seemed to have, Matt's dino deck was the first one out the gate and seemed to consistently be staying in the lead the entire time. He never got a trigger where he got 8 dinosaurs, but all the dinosaurs he did hit were super relevant and gained him a ton of life. Mike's inclusions continue to impress me, and cards like Emrakul's Evangel are always a fun surprise to see. Crash was also a fun commander to see, and the only other time that I've seen it was one person in Montreal having played him. He quickly gains a lot of counters, and using Altar of Dementia to mill Matt out like that was pretty fun. Sean is continuing to test his Nath deck, and as you can see, he quickly gets a bunch of Elf Warrior tokens whether he's trying hard or not. With a board full of 1-1s, you really don't need a lot of pumpers in order to be able to do a ton of damage, as you saw when he was swinging with only the Drago War Collar with two counters on it and was able to do a ton of damage. It was certainly a unique ending, and I'm glad I got to share it with you all, so please let me know what you guys think about the ending in the comments below. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.